Hi everybody, welcome to my home. I'm Dennis Prager of PragerU and a whole host of other things, but you probably know me best from PragerU. Oh, a lot of you, I hope, listen to my uh, radio show, my syndicated radio show, which is on the internet and, of course, local stations around the United States. So, it's great to be with you. I just returned from Europe. I spoke at in Brussels at the European Parliament. If you'd like to see that speech, it is up at DennisPrager.com, and I guess at PragerU, too. Is that correct? I guess at both. My speech at uh, the European Parliament, which tragically, and it's a good segue into what I want to open up about and then take your questions, which uh, a fair amount of objection to my speaking. You know, I, if I, I'd like to be personal with you. You know, this is really, these fireside chats, which I do each week, are completely unscripted. Uh, we don't really know till a few minutes beforehand even what I'll open with. I like it to be as spontaneous as possible, as open as possible, just me to you, and then your questions to me. I want to tell you something very personal. It, it, it's really quite sad, I guess that's the best word, that I'm controversial. If you look at the body of my work, and it's a, it's a lifetime of work, it's all about goodness. It's really just about making the world better, making people better, having husbands and wives get along better, getting children who were alienated from their parents to talk to their parents again. I mean, when you think of the body of my work, teaching the Ten Commandments, why am I controversial? It's not a comment about me that I'm controversial. It's a comment about those who find me controversial. That's, that's really what it's all about. I mean, take, take a, a, an example of a very hot-button issue. So I think that marriage should have remained defined as between a man and a woman. So let's say you disagree with me. And I want to add, there are good people who disagree with me. There are bad people who disagree with me. There are good people who agree with me and bad people who agree with me. On this subject, there are good people all over the place and bad people all over the place. I acknowledge that. But why is that controversial? That has been the definition of marriage through all of recorded history. It, you could say I'm wrong. I, I respect that possibility. But why is it controversial, let alone hate-filled? That's what's so remarkable. That's what's worthy of, of exploration. Barack Obama was against same-sex marriage through at least half of, of his eight years as president. Was he a hater? Was he controversial? Then all of a sudden, one day it's declared hate-filled, a position that everybody had through all of history, every civilization, every nation, every religion. Maybe it's controversial to redefine marriage. I mean, if you want to be honest to the word controversial, that should be controversial. Right or wrong, that's the controversial position, not the one that has retained a, a, a fairly good definition for all of recorded history. So that's, that's, and that's, I'm taking one of the most controversial positions that I, uh, the allegedly controversial positions that I hold. But think about everything else. That's why I look when I see all the hate written about me or, or people who think like I do. There, there's no substance to the accusations. It's really quite remarkable that. Uh, that I'm controversial, that Prager University is controversial. We have four Prager University courses are given by some of the most distinguished people in the world. Four former prime ministers, liberals, Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, black, white, gay, women, men, young, old. 
what, what is the big deal? You may not agree, but, but why the hatred directed against us? So it can only reflect against the haters. It's, it, we're not the haters. They are. The people who hate us are the haters. We don't, nobody affiliated with us has, has, has any hate in him or her. We're out there to, to do good, just good. But it is what it is. I'm not complaining. I got a great life. A lot of people take what I say seriously. A lot of you are watching this. I know that. But it's still remarkable. So it leads me to the issue of censorship that is taking place on, on the part of the biggest internet sites. And, and specifically I'm thinking of Google, which owns YouTube. Google owns YouTube and YouTube has a restricted list. Here's the way the restricted list works. People who have filters in their homes, they don't want kids... Or, or adults, for that matter. They don't want anybody in the house to have access to pornography and excessive violence. So you can have a filter. It's a safe, uh, what is it, safe search or something like that. Just a safety filter. That's fine. I, re I respect that, obviously. Why would our videos ever be lumped in with pornography by, by YouTube? So I, I, I'll give you an example. I mean, there's a whole list here. He Here's one I give. This is this is lumped with pornography by YouTube, so that if you have any filters in your home, you can't see it. You cannot see it. No library can see it. No school can see it. That's what the restricted list means. The Ten Commandments, what you should know. A five-minute video that I have given uh, explaining the Ten Commandments. Doesn't this tell you a lot? about Google and YouTube and nothing about us? That they consider that in the realm of pornography, which they do. The hatred of, of uh, Judeo-Christian values is so deep on the part of the left, not liberals, but the left, I always make a distinction, and Google and YouTube are leftists, not liberal. I wish they were liberal. I, I, I would respect them uh, tremendously. Liberals have always been for free speech. Leftists have always been against free speech. It, it, it's an astonishing thing that that, that, that would be the case. Uh, or uh, how about this? To show you how political it is, the opposition to us. Carol Swain is a black former Princeton University, Vanderbilt University professor. Black woman, major scholar. She gave a course about uh, the Democratic Party. Because the Democratic Party was historically the racist party. That was the pro-slavery party. The Republican Party was founded in, in large measure to oppose slavery. How many people know that? Very few. So she gave a course on it. Google doesn't want kids to see that or pornography. What do you think of that? Or how's this? Let's see. Brett Stephens. Brett Stephens is a never-Trumper columnist for the New York Times. Should America be the world's policeman? You may say yes, you may say no. Why is it on the restricted list by, by YouTube? And think about who's giving it. It, 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 does it. Why does this not bother anyone of conscience, whether you agree with what we say or not? Do you understand what is happening here? So it's, it's really one of the great lies of our time that these are open forums. They're not open forums. Google and YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, they're not open forums. My God, I, I can't, I, I mean, I can't believe it. Larry Elder. Larry Elder is one of the great thinkers of, of our time. He's a black guy. Is America racist? So if a black says America's not racist... We, Google doesn't want anybody to watch it. Isn't that amazing? Or doesn't want any kid or any fi home with filters or any school or any library to watch it, to be very precise. Why? A black is not allowed to say America's a blessing? 
<coughs> is that is that somehow uh, uh, not not allowable? I when I was picked up, uh, my wife and I were picked up at the airport uh, by car service to take us uh, back home after Europe, and the driver uh, was a as I guess I don't know what the language today is a woman of color. Uh, as she would say, she's brown. She's from Sri Lanka. And it was, it was, uh, she was so eloquent in her love of America and appreciation of how it is and how much more racism and ethnic bigotry she found in Sri Lanka. And I'm not knocking Sri Lanka, a place I have visited and enjoyed immensely. But she said, there's no comparison. She said, in my whole life as a brown woman, Living in completely white neighborhoods, I have never once experienced racism. So, was this woman deluded? If we had her give a, a, a PragerU video on how much she, as a non-white, appreciates America, I promise you, there is no doubt in my mind, YouTube, Google would put it on the restricted list. God forbid someone should hear a non-white say that America is a good place. Now you see, it's not about us. The sickness, the evil is on, the, uh, is on their side, not ours. These are not bad things we say. These are good and kind and loving things we're saying. It's very bad, really bad. What else is here? Oh boy, here's... Oh, Brett Stevens has another one, wow. New York Times columnist can't stand Trump, even even he's banned. How Lincoln changed the world in two minutes. Doug Dowds or Dudes, I don't remember how to pronounce his name. I don't understand. Lincoln? What, God forbid people should think well of, of, of America's founders? I mean, obviously Lincoln's not a founder and was alive in 1776, but you know, he's one of the giants of American history. It, it, some of them don't even make sense like that one. Or, or how about this? The classical, this is a classic liberal position. Don't judge blacks differently, given by a, a brilliant young black woman. It says, it's racist to judge us differently. We want to be judged by the same standards as everybody else. That was the whole message of Martin Luther King Jr., it's the whole message of, of the civil rights movement. It, it, it's, it's, it, it's something beyond belief. Are People Born Good by Dennis Prager. Yeah, that's, that's, really, uh, that's really worthy of, of, uh, of being censored. I, do you realize that? Are people born good? Uh, or as I'm saying, we're not born good, we're not born bad. But we're not born good is very important because we have to make people good. So we who are promoting making people good, we're censored. It's the Google YouTube uh, fools who, who are uh, or suppressing this. Their arrogance is beyond belief. They're so certain they're right that they could, they could shut us down if they want or shut us down to the extent that they can. So it's just come out now. We have a video of a woman, a high-ranking woman, uh, thanks to Project Veritas, a high-ranking woman uh, that uh, at Google caught on camera saying, we're not going to allow to happen in 2020 what happened in 2016. We're not going to allow Donald Trump to be reelected. Is that, is that Google's job? I thought Google's job was to, to actually give you honest results when you put in a search. But they don't think it is. They're not there to give you honest results. They're get there to promote their left-wing views. Now, if they would announce that, I'd have no trouble. If they would say, look, Google is a left-wing organization, and have a great day. Okay. Then they're honest. But they claim to be open. If they're not open. This should trouble every one of you with a conscience. I don't care what your politics are. Anyway, I'm not going to read you all the rest. I mean, it's, it's, at, it's at PragerU.com. And, and then we have a whistleblower as well from, uh, 
uh, from Google, and and who was mentioned that uh, they're particularly annoyed with PragerU and David Rubin. Dave Rubin is a gay liberal, and they want to shut him down like they want to shut us down. Yep. Isn't that amazing? I'm sure, is Dave Rubin's uh, on, the, on the censored list? I, I, I didn't see it, but it's hard to believe it wouldn't. It is? Yeah, I would think so. He, he did a very powerful video for PragerU, Why I Left the Left. And he's still a liberal, and he's still gay. If you don't think lockstep with the left, they really will suppress you at college, or on the internet, or in high school. This should worry good people. That's my message. Okay, let me take your questions from all over the world. Don't forget, you can see the, uh, the video of my talk at uh, the European Parliament. Okay, let's see here. Okay, let's begin at the top. That's usually the place to begin. And Quinton, 21, state of Washington. As a conservative in a primarily liberal state, I wish your state were liberal. It's leftist. I have no issue with liberals. I don't agree with them on, on certain matters, like specifically the size of government. But uh, there's a lot of honor in being a liberal. There's no honor in being a leftist. Okay, well, I lost that. Got to go back again. You know why? I know why. This thing goes, it's still, it's got the uh, rotated thing. How's Otto doing, by the way? I want to thank all of you writing to Otto. Otto was very touched by all your fan mail. All of you who asked me about Otto at airports, I want you to know that I am touched as well. It is theoretically possible he is America's most famous dog. And as I often tell you, I am proud to tell you it has not gone to his head. He acts the same now as he did before he was a household name. And, and it, it took a lot of upbringing. My wife and I worked on his character, and we're happy to say so far it's worked. All right, Quinton in Washington State, as a conservative and primarily liberal state, I feel like I cannot voice my opinions on many issues. No kidding. That was exactly what I was just talking about, right? What is the best way to deal with this? Love the show, and PragerU is one of the best political YouTube channels out there. By the way, we're not all political. We're, we're everything. We've got videos on, 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 on forgiveness by psychiatrists. We, we, we have videos on, on character building, on, on raising children. A lot of what we do is not political. It's about goodness. A lot of it is just history. You know, learn, learn about Calvin Coolidge. Learn about Napoleon. Learn about, oh, the British Empire. That was re that's on the restricted list. Because the author said, maybe there's some good things that came from the British Empire, which is a fact. It's just a fact. I've been to India four times. I really enjoy uh, visiting India. And uh, there would not be an India as we know it if it weren't for the British Empire, because... It established courts. It abolished. They abolished sati. Women being burned along with their husband, their 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 late husband's body. Live women, the widow, being burned. Uh, and uh, English. That's the that's the most obvious. You know how Indians communicate with each other in English, because there were so many languages. A Bengali can't speak to a guy who speaks Urdu. It, it's just. It's English. English made India as a functioning unit possible. That's restricted. You can't hear that. Because the simpletons of the left want you to think, oh, empire, all evil. Because they can't think in nuances on the left. It's all black and white. Everything is black and white. What is the best way to deal with this? That uh, you can't, uh, you feel like you can't vo voice your opinions. The answer is to voice them in as articulate and calm a way as possible. They're, they're, that's the only way to do it. And, and you just have to be true to yourself, to your values, 
uh, if you believe in God, true to what you believe God wants from you in, in terms of honesty and, and do your thing. And, and if people uh, shun you, then it's their loss. I don't have a better answer than that. But it's also, that's what I like to help people is to learn how to articulate our values in, in, in a way. Here's a way, here's one thing you might want to do. Adopt my attitude that you prefer clarity to agreement. So that if you're in a discussion with someone, don't try to, don't try to change their mind. Just say calmly, listen, I don't want to change your mind. I don't even want to fight. All I want to do is clarify where we differ. And that's very helpful. It's fascinatingly uh, helpful for you to do. Rebecca, 22, Vermont. What do you think about, uh, let's see, well, I'll talk about that another time. What do you think about AOC's concentration camp comment? So uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, yes, concentration camp. Uh, even Bill Maher, who is a man of the left, uh, but I, actually I would say Bill Maher is liberal left. He, he, has, he, he has some courageous liberal positions that are not left wing. And uh, uh, to his credit, uh, he he had a uh, he had a monologue on on AOC's uh, concentration camp comment and said, "Come on, everybody knows what we think about when we say concentration camp, and America is not running concentration camps at the border. Of course, it's the wrong term. This is Bill Maher who said this. Ch check it out. It's it, it's a it's a very effective one. He said he said you know." He said, Holocaust literally means, hey, if concentration camp just literally means concentrating people, then Holocaust means uh, 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 burnt, burnt by fire. That's true. He said, well, are we going to have a uh, Holocaust barbecue? Nobody says that. Obviously, it has a spe specific meaning in people's minds when you say concentration camp. But the truth is, she doesn't know a thing about the Holocaust. I'd be surprised if she could spell it. Okay, let's see here. There we go again. Every time I turn this thing, we got next time we have to remember it's on the rotation thing. We can't have it rotate. Okay. Next. Joao 19 in Araras in Brazil. Hi Dennis and Otto. <laughs> What's Otto doing? Is he just licking his uh, his uh, face? Yeah. Otto, bulldogs have the busiest tongues perhaps outside of the the world of snakes uh, i mean they're, they're always out there but the, he's he's busy all right hi dennis and otto i've heard you talking about victor frankl's book man's search for meaning in an interview and i would love to hear more about your thoughts regarding the meaning of life whoa that's a big one and when are you coming to brazil we would we truly need your words here i'm dying to come to brazil and speak there was an invitation it didn't work out i gotta i gotta look into it again but i i would love to come i would like to go everywhere uh, what can I say? I wish I had more than 24 hours in a day. But I would like to go. Listen, what I, I believe that, what I, what, what Prager U.S. say, what I have to say, it, it's either worthwhile everywhere or it isn't worthwhile anywhere. This is not just America-oriented, it's not just Jews and Christians-oriented, it is human-oriented. Anyway, uh, the meaning of life. Well, I have a lot on the meaning of life. Uh, it's such a huge issue. Maybe I'll do an opening uh, thing once on that. But he, I'll tell you this. This I will tell you. This is because I, I, I don't like to avoid questions. There is something that deeply, a lot of things have undermined meaning in people's lives in the Western world. There is a terrible combination of secularism and affluence. So I'll begin with affluence. Poor people, secular or religious, all have meaning in their life. And that is get a meal, find a place to sleep, have some shelter, right? Poor people have a built-in meaning. How do I have enough to, to survive another week? That's very meaningful. I don't wish that type of meaning on anybody, but it is, it is, let's be honest, that's meaning. So affluence knocks out that basic problem because 
None of you watching are worried whether you will starve to death or have a roof over your head. Okay, I'm, I'm assuming that. The other is secularism. Secularism has knocked out the other, another major source of meaning, God and religion. So when people have no God or religion and people have no uh, financial meaning in the sense of, I, I got to get a meal, where are they going to get their meaning from? And there's another one that they knocked out. And that is, and I've spoken about this, belief in your country. Not bad belief, good belief. Americans believed in America, that we should be a, a bright, shining light, bright on a hill. That's the American ideal, to be a good place, not perfect place, a good place. And to be a model to others in, in many ways, and we have been. With all our flaws that we have been. The French gave the Statue of Liberty to America, not Canada, not to itself, not Uruguay, to America. So what the left has done is it has knocked out all these meanings. I get the chills as an American when, I, when the national anthem of the U.S. is played. I hope those of you in Brazil get chills when your national anthem is played. I hope those of you uh, in, uh, in, in, in Romania uh, get chilled I spoke in Romania last year, that's why I'm mentioning it. Get, 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 have chills when the Romanian national anthem is played. It is a good and healthy thing to have an emotional, positive reaction to your, to your country, if your country is a decent place. If it's an indecent place, it's a separate issue. So people, where are people getting meaning? No God, no religion, no nation. Uh, their finances are taken care of. Where do they get meaning now? I guess everything is in the career basket. God is at a mistake. I've talked about that, but I should talk about it again. What's our time frame? 27. I thought you were going to say 28. A built-in clock. <laughs> All right. Mache in Scarborough. Where's Scarborough? Did we figure it out? Okay. It sounds, it sounds like it's Britain, but I don't know. Dennis, why did you not start writing your five-part commentary with the first book of the Bible? I started with the second, Exodus, because it has the Ten Commandments, and my belief, which you could see on the PragerU videos that I gave on the Ten Commandments, that that is all basically humanity needs, and we would be living heaven on earth. If everybody lived by the Ten Commandments, you would need no police, you would need no armies, do you know what we could spend? Think about it for a minute. If we didn't, if countries didn't need to defend themselves against other countries or build arms to invade other countries, like Iran builds arms to do, let let us say uh, that we didn't have to spend any money on those on those things. Do you know how much we could spend on cancer research, on Alzheimer's research? When you think of the, of the hundreds of billions of dollars on weapons, so uh, when I advocate the Ten Commandments, I don't know why that's controversial. So that's why I started with the second, and I ask all of you watching, I don't ask you much, but I would, I would like you to read uh, the Rational Bible. It'll be five volumes, two are out. I have Genesis and Exodus, the first two volumes of the Bible. That is wisdom. <coughs> That stuff will teach you about life. And it's fascinating. And this is a lifelong work coming to fruition. It's called the Rational Bible. So I guess that's it for now, eh? Let's see. We got here Norway and Belgium. Scarborough. Yeah, I thought it was England, right. And Georgia, not the country, the state, Massachusetts. This is nice. Hong Kong. It's very touching for me to think I'm sitting in my house talking to people all over the world. That's one of the great benefits, obviously, of the Internet. There are a lot of great benefits. Otto, Otto feels that it's over. This, the, I got the message. He's had enough. All right, so again, you could, uh, you could see my speech to the uh, European Parliament up at PragerU and at DennisPrager.com. I commend to your attention the Rational Bible. Please watch our videos at PragerU. Send them to others. Oh, one final word about the 
about the fireside chats. These are timeless. They come out every week, but if you watch one, what do we have now? About 90 up? 88. 88. Yeah, that's called about 90. Yeah. 88 qualifies as about 90. And uh, if you watch number 17, it's just as relevant. Because this is really good stuff about life in a very informal setting and very accessible. So I hope you'll watch it. I hope you'll have others watch it too. Thanks. So until next week, from my home to yours, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to keep these fireside chats free, please do by donating to PragerU.